Good morning, all. So, in today's session, we'll study about time varying electric and magnetic field as well as continuity equation. So far in this uh, in this uh, course, we have studied about static electric field and magnetic field. That is. Uh, electrostatics and magnetostatic. So it was static charges we were, we were studying about. Now we will study about time varying electric and magnetic field. Let's see. So with regards to uh, time varying electric and magnetic field, what actually uh, we are talking about is uh, earlier we have studied electrostatics. So electrostatics is due to Electrostatics is due to stationary charges. For example, uh, we have a positive charge here, and if we have a negative charge here, so then uh, there will be flow of charge from positive end to negative end, like like this. It will be flowing, and uh, if there is no, if there is, if there is a uh, negative charge is not there, then will be moving towards infinity. So this is how the charge will be flowing. And this is a electrostatic field. So this field will be electrostatic field. So this is what we have learned till now in second module. So if that charge is moving at a speed u, so if this, so I told you like the charge q is moving from positive to negative side. And uh, if, if there is no negative side means it will be moving towards infinity. So it will be moving out, coming outside. So from the positive charge, so it is called electrostatic speed. And if they are moving at a speed u, then dq by dt is equal to i. So if charges are moving at a speed u, Therefore, dq by dt, that is the speed with, that is the moment of charge with respect to time, it will be equal to the current i. So, we already know that since it is at a constant speed, then that is i will be a constant, right? So, if this current is constant with respect to time, then it produces a static magnetic field or magnetostatics. That's what I studied in module 3. So, if this charge produces a current, produces a current that is static with respect to time, then it produces a static magnetic field. That is what we have studied in module 3. At the introduction, what we have studied is static magnetic field. So that is, it is produced due to the steady current, right? The current is steady, it is not changing with respect to time. So, uh, it can be of two, two cases, that is motion of charges is with the uniform velocity or if you are using permanent, that is permanent magnetic dipoles. So, two conditions are there, so what we have already seen, that is first one, motion of charges with uniform velocity or if you are using permanent magnets. So both these cases, what we are getting is electrostatic field or magnetostatic field. So that is, it is not time varying. Okay. So before starting time varying, I was, I'm just, I'm just giving you a comparison. Now, so now, now you, you saw that the current I is, was not changing with respect to time. That is, it was not time varying. Now consider a case where we have a current I which is time varying, like it is changing like this, or maybe it is changing like this, or maybe it is changing like this. Any, any way it can get changed, right? So this is called a time varying current. So this is changing with respect to time. So it is called 
a time varying uh, current. So it will be having a time varying electric field. So this can result in a time varying electric field. So initial condition, it was from stationary objects or it was with the uniform velocity. Now uh, what we are having is the, the, uh, the current is changing with respect to time. So it will be producing a time varying electric field and which in turn will have a time varying magnetic field. And there will be a time varying magnetic field. So there is a time varying electric field as well as there is a time varying magnetic field. So in order to get a time varying magnetic field, uh, there can be different conditions. So initially, so this all this experiment was done by Michael Faraday. So we have a Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which we will be learning. So Faraday observed that uh, it is an ammeter and a closed circuit here. So Faraday observed that a, ma uh, a magnet, which when it was kept at stationary position, there was no current being induced. Uh, of course, you might have studied these things in transformer. That is because now in this semester you have DC machines and transformers. So this principle, same principle here. So, but when the conductor was moved towards the circuit, or that is, uh, it will be having coils, and also it was when it was moved close as well as, well as it was moved away, you could see some deflection in the galvanometer or ammeter which he was using. So time varying magnetic field can be ob uh, obtained by you by moving conductor either the conductor should be moved or it can be by moving the magnetic field so it can be either by moving the conductor or it can be either by music by moving the magnetic field so in that case a, a time varying magnetic field it can result in the production of an emf so two types of emf will be produced two types of EMF will be produced. So first one is statically induced EMF. Statically induced EMF. So that is what happens in a transformer. Because transformer is a static device. And second one is a dynamically induced EMF. Dynamically induced EMF. So, it's, so the intersection of time varying electric and magnetic field results in a because uh, when in case of a time varying current, uh, we will have a time varying electric field and that then so we will have a time varying magnetic field and that results in the production of EMF and all. So the electric field and magnetic field are dependent on each other. So the intersection of time varying electric and magnetic field result in a wave called the electromagnetic wave. The intersection of time varying electric and magnetic field results in electro magnetic wave. So about this we are studying in the coming modules. Now there is no need of going deep into this. So uh, so normally uh, they, they ask you uh, to write short notes on time varying electric and magnetic field. So uh, this is the, actually the basic idea that you should give the electrostatics and magnetostatics. It was like this so current was not changing. Then like the, due to the move, uh, either by a moving conductor or moving magnetic field, the, there will be a time varying electric and magnetic field. So this is the basic principle of most of the machines. So that can result in an induced EMF. So it can be a statically induced EMF or dynamically induced EMF. And the intersection of this time varying electric and magnetic field result in electromagnetic wave. Now let's see what is Faraday's law saying. Just a uh, Brief introduction only. So Faraday's law 
Faraday's law states that the induced dm of e is equal to minus n into d phi by dt, where e is the induced emf. So induced emf e is equal to minus n into d phi by dt, where e is the induced emf and phi is the change in flux. And n is the number of turns of the coil. Now we will see the continuity equation of current. So for that, uh, we'll consider, so write down, consider that a time varying, so now, now all we are, we are studying is about time varying charges only. Consider that a time varying positive charge is continuously distributed in a region of some volume in a region of some volume with charge density rho v. So we had a, a surface here, a volume here. We considered a small, um, it, had a, it has a charge Q of t, just, just, just varying with time. A current I is entering a current I2 is leaving a small surface, we took Ds in that and it's having current density J as well as we took a small volume which is having volume charge density rho v and it's a closed surface. And also total charge, total charge Q of T, total charge is equal to Q of T and it is time varying. So the net current flowing out of the region will be net current flowing out will be equal to I2 minus I1. So that is the net current flowing out. So we can say that I is equal to minus d by dt of q of t. So why is negative sign k? So because we are following law of conservation of charge. What does that say? As per law of conservation of charge, the net outward positive charge must be balanced by decreasing the positive charge in the closed surface. So we have a charge I1 coming and I2 is going out. So the net outward positive charge should be balanced by a decrease in the positive charge inside the closed surface. Then only the, uh, the energy will be conserved. That is, as per law of conservation of charge, the net outward positive charge must be balanced by decrease in the positive charge in the closed surface. So there should be a total decrease in the positive charge in the closed surface. So we can, uh, maybe you can represent that also like this. Charge coming out. this thing should have come in the first module itself, second module itself. So we can write I is equal to closed interval over us 
j dot ds where j is the current density which is equal to minus dqi by dt which we have to realize some negative sign because of law of conservation of charge then according to divergence theorem we can write integral j dot ds which will be equal to integral over v the volume that we have considered del dot j into dv so that's what uh, uh, divergence theorem say and also q of t q of t can be written as integral over v rho v dv because rho v is the volume charge density so charge per volume so that will be volume charge density so total charge will be integration of charge per volume with, with the total volume so q of t is equal to integral over v rho v dv then combining all this we can write integral j dot ds so this is divergence theorem theorem so integral j dot ds is equal to minus d by dt of so q i will replace by integral over v raw v dv so then uh, when applied to the divergence theorem equation it will become integral over v del dot j dv is equal to minus of integral d by dt raw v into dv so we can write del dot j is equal to minus do by dot t of rho v and this is what we call the differential form of so from this equation uh, we get here reach here this is called the differential form of continuity equation so we call this the differential form of continuity equation so this is very important the understanding of all these things are very important so the current or charge per second so what we can say the current or charge per second diverging from a small volume per unit volume or closed surface per unit volume is equal to the time rate of decrease of charge per unit charge at every point so you know that uh, when we studied uh, divergence theorem we also written del dot j is equal to integral over s j dot ds by limit of delta v tending to zero delta v so what does that mean that is the current out coming out of a closed surface per unit volume is equal to the time rate of decrease of the volume charge density at the same instant so this equation actually explains this statement so this is what we mean by continuity equation so continuity equation of current is normally asked in your exams so this is what you should realize the law of conservation of charge the net charge coming out should be balanced by a decrease in the charge inside and then you should realize it with respect to q of, uh, q of t is equal to uh, v rho of t rho v dv and rho v dv everything you know whatever it is whatever all this because in this figure everything is marked and then you should apply the divergence theorem and finally you should say that del dot j is equal to minus dou by dt of rho v